Hello folks, this is uh, Jack Quinn, and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about setting yourself free with regard to designing a painting and not being restricted to the scene at hand, but rather being able to use perspective to alter the scene to your liking, and uh, therefore enabling yourself to uh, fit uh, the elements of the scene into your overall design. So what I thought I'd do is I, I, I'm going to build uh, a drawing and a painting from scratch, or pretty close to it. I actually have a sketch here that I made a, uh, on a fleeting moment on a train. Uh, I looked off in the distance and I saw a couple of buildings that were kind of interesting. They were stone buildings. These will eventually turn into stone buildings also. And um, there was one building in the back and another one forward. And then I think I recall seeing some sort of an outbuilding or a shed. So what I um, would like to do is I, I, have, a, I have an idea in mind uh, with respect to a design uh, configuration for the painting. And that is I, I, I usually like to contain the painting somehow. In this case, I think a U-shape might work. I'll uh, probably make it a snow scene, and I'll put a, either a road or a pathway working up from the bottom of the of the frame uh, to uh, offset these uh, elements here. So I'll probably have it more over to the right here. So picture a U-shape. So, and what I mean by that is I, I like to link my darks. Uh, so looking at a scene like this dead on, there, there really are no darks other, other than if I make the stone dark. And that's not too interesting. So I'd like to have a light source maybe coming in from the right. And I'd like to be able to have this side of the building dark. But in order for that to make sense, I'd need to reorient the building. And therein lies the exercise we're about ready to go to. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to use this technique for your, yourself. Now, it's not limited to um, outdoor scenes and barns and buildings. I mean, you could use the same methodology indoors as well with uh, uh, interiors, still lifes, and so forth. So what I'm doing here is I'm envisioning the building as it might appear from an aerial point of view. And that's what these three pieces of paper represent. I cut these out. This is actually a roof line here and a roof line here. Uh, so there's the back building. There's the, the building forward to it. And this would be the shed off to the right. So those are, you know, relative dimensions that I think uh, might represent a structure such as this. So now the trick is, um, I've, I've reoriented the building in such a way that I, my view will catch this side of the building, and this side and this corner. Um, it's sometimes referred to as a plan view, uh, if you want to use architecture uh, lingo. Um, so the trick is to be able to go from that aerial view down to a two-dimensional drawing. So let me give you a couple of uh, uh, items to keep in mind uh, as far as uh, terminology goes. You have this notion of a ground line. That's where the building sits. There's the notion of a horizon line, which is your line of sight looking out at the horizon. I want some dramatic effect with this painting. So I've actually I've put my horizon down, horizon line down lower than the actual structure itself, so that I'm looking up at it. Also, I want to establish a viewpoint, which is this area here, such that I'm pretty close to the building, and that's going to further exaggerate uh, the the notion of looking up. And lastly, uh, which you'll I'll explain in a minute, I've got the concept of a three-point perspective, which is not something maybe you would normally do, but um, for my purposes on this painting, I want to really emphasize the drama of looking up at the building, so I'm going to use three-point perspective as well. But I'll, I'm going to concentrate primarily on the two-point perspective so that you get an understanding of how to go from a plan view, aerial view, to a two-dimensional drawing. So let's start by establishing the viewpoint, which is right here, orienting the building in such a way, and I've used these sticks as, a, as, a, as an aid so you can get an idea of what the line of sight is. So here's my viewpoint back here. I'm going to be looking up at the building and catching that corner right there. 
that far corner back here. And I'm also going to catch this corner and forward, the inner corner and the forward corner of the building here. Now, that will allow me to capture this dark, which is ultimately going to translate into this side of a building. And there's going to be a shadow right there and a cast shadow coming down here. So there's my interesting dark shape that's going to start to allow me to create this U-shape. I'll emphasize it with some trees over here. Likewise, on the other side, I'll have some trees here. And what I really am going after is I want this stone front to be sunlit. And uh, likewise with a portion of this building sunlit. So that's where I'm going with the painting. So how do I get there by way of a drawing? We start by using our viewpoint to pick off the critical points. When I say critical points, these are these visible corners. You know... Um, here, there's another one here, the roof line here, the juncture where the shed meets the building. And we start by establishing something called a picture plane. And the picture plane is going to serve as a reference point. And everything else will be relative to that reference point. So I picked the most forward portion of the building, which is this forward corner which in the drawing is going to ultimately turn out to be this line right here. And I draw a horizontal line side to side, and that is our picture plane. Now, what's a challenge sometimes is to figure out where do you put the vanishing points. We know we need a couple of vanishing points on a horizon line. We've all seen that or read that along the way. And folks just kind of arbitrarily drop them in and, you know, kind of looks okay, sort of where the lines converge to those vanishing points. But the real trick is to get them in the right place. And that's uh, somewhat of an elusive uh, task to, to figure that out. But it's not difficult, and I'll show you how to do that right now. It, it's relative to this picture plane. There are two angles here. One's here and one is here, down to that picture plane line. We're going to replicate that down here from our viewpoint. Another simpler way to do it, and what I tend to do, is just align your viewpoint so that that stick or string or ruler, or whatever you're using, is parallel to the sides of the building. On the left side, and we swing it over, and you can see this angle is, you know, fairly sharp here. So this stick now is going to go way out. And what I tend to do is I use a... Um, um, a stick that I have positioned on that T over there from my uh, table saw that will eventually serve as the uh, far vanishing point. But I'm using this viewpoint parallel to this side of the building to get out there where that vanishing point now is established. So I have two vanishing points, a left and a right, and I have my picture plane here. And now the next exercise is to simply pick up the primary points on the building, the far corner, this corner, inner corner, so forth. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line from those points and intersecting, there's the line, I'm intersecting the picture plane. Where I intersect the picture plane, I draw a vertical line straight down to the ground line where the building is sitting. And I do that for each of the points. I'm, I'm coming over here. I'm establishing those significant points, corner by corner, inner corner, the front corner. Now, this front corner is significant because everything is going to be relative to that front corner. When I draw that line down to the ground line here, all my other verticals are going to be relative to that line. So that's that's really the name of the game when you're talking about going from a plan view to a two-dimensional two drawing is getting that front corner uh, where you want it to be and the height you want it to be. And lastly, you know, we have this point here for where the uh, 
shed joins the building in the far corner of the shed, which would also be in our field of view. And if we follow that line down, we intersect it, it comes down to the ground line, and here's our, there's that line there for the shed. So um, that's, that's what allows us to get all of these verticals. Now what we could do is we could establish a, um, what they call an elevation view um, off to the right here. Uh, I could have the ground line and literally pick a scale, you know, whatever scale I wanted, and drew the building, you know, face on, and all those key points, you know, doorways, windows, rooftop, I could draw horizontal lines over to this area to intersect my verticals, which I previously established, and do the drawing that way. Uh, I, I didn't bother because it's a painting. I know how big I want the, the, uh, the structure to be. So I established this line based on how large I want the building to be, and then everything else will fall into place using my uh, vanishing points uh, for proper drawing. So I, had, I put my vertical in, and then from that point on, it's pretty much easy pickings. I had these sticks set up in such a way that they represent the left and right vanishing points, and as you can see, I'm just coming along here, drawing those lines, coming over here, and knocking those lines off as we come down. And likewise, my other vanishing point, which I have out on that uh, uh, T bracket, I bring that one over, and I likewise use that stick to create my horizontals going this way, on up. And uh, that's essentially how one would go about creating a two-dimensional drawing from a plan view that you can create from scratch. Uh, you could also enhance an existing scene. Maybe you see a building, you want to add another building, and you want that building to fit uh, correctly in the scene. So from a design point of view, you might have different structures, a water tower, uh, but you want that water tower to look correct relative to the building that it's next to, and you have a rough idea where you'd like to position it from a design point of view, this is a methodology that will allow you to do that. So, like I said at the outset, it sets you free. You can be very creative in how you use this uh, perspective uh, to enhance your paintings. And keep in mind, although it seems mechanical and somewhat uh, uh, precise, and there is a degree of precision, uh, this is unrelated to style. You know, once you have that drawing established, anything goes. So if you want to paint in a very loose manner, go for it.